Google's Gemini AI might be impressive, however, what makes the whole experience of using it so much more infuriating to the average user is all of the confusing terminology that goes alongside with it. With so many different terms and different versions of the program with different limitations, there's a lot to get through. So here's pretty much everything you need to know about Google Gemini and its various versions and exactly how they differ. Now, Gemini on its own can refer to both the AI chatbot that you can interact with, but also the wider family of large language models that Google have built in house and there's plenty of different versions of it that you might get to use. Starting off, the most lightweight one is Gemini Nano, which is the smallest one and of course the least capable. Hence why it's usually used for features on your phone like say summarizing a large document. It also does not support the chatbot feature as it just doesn't have the capabilities to generate cohesive responses there. For that you can go with Gemini Pro. This is the model that you will be interacting with if you're using a chatbot by say going onto the Gemini website online or by downloading the app available on both Android and iOS. It is a medium sized model that in terms of capabilities is said to be around that of ChatGPT 3.5, so extremely capable and should be able to do pretty much everything you want it to do, including things like say image generation as well. However, if you need even more, if you need a very refined model with as many parameters as possible, then there is Gemini Ultra, which offered the best results, but it was locked under a $20 subscription. So that was the original stack of three different options that Google launched Gemini with. However, it got a lot more complicated since then. For example, Gemini Ultra itself was surpassed by Gemini 1.5 Pro, an improvement to the Pro model that brings it more in line with Ultra while being a lot more efficient. That in itself was later surpassed by Gemini 2.0, bringing next-gen versions of both Pro and Nano, but not Ultra. And then there is Gemini Advanced, which is the name of the overall subscription you need to pay if you want to access some of the most high-end models. So no, Advanced is in the name of yet another model. So yeah, it is getting pretty confusing at this point, but we're not done yet. Then there's Gemini for Workspace, which is the integration of Gemini into several work and enterprise apps within the Google ecosystem, like say for example Gmail or Google Docs. And finally, there's also the Gemini Image Creator, which if you've seen stuff like DALI or Midjourney, you know exactly what this thing is capable of. And while it does create some pretty impressive results, there are also restrictions. For example, it is not available in France or any of the French territories for legal reasons. And also if you want to generate any images, including people, then you are also going to have to pay up for that Gemini Advanced subscription. All in all, while Gemini is an extremely capable large language model and it is only going to get better with time as these things do, Google definitely haven't made things easy to understand, but hopefully now you know exactly what all the different versions are, what they offer, and what all of the terminology means. So if you found this video helpful, maybe subscribe to How to Authority for more like this in the future.